Good Saturday morning. Ooh, getting an extra video there, like just like that this week. Um, this is an extra outtake from uh, a live stream that I did with Sue's No Up Cat Hinton, and uh, we just found ourselves talking about uh, being how, how I view myself as a professional bad typist. Uh, that like a lot of people comment that it's relaxing to see me that like, I make mistakes on stream, and then we segue a little bit into like vulnerability and also the complexities of um, of managing and coding while you are on a stream if you're interested in that kind of thing getting a little bit of like what it is to be in the mind of a of a coding streamer I'm um, sure you're gonna enjoy this video uh, before we get on to the video I would like to thank today's sponsor Linode Linode is our VPS sponsor they're excellent I'm gonna read you their pitch Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable to host any app, site, or project in the cloud. Whether you are a Linux power user or just learning to code, you can use Linode to deploy game servers, WordPress sites, personal VPNs, and much, much more. Sign up with a link in the description for 20% credit on your new Linode account. Thank you so much, Linode, for sponsoring the show. Now, on to the video. I mean, so that video that you did a while ago, actually, and this has nothing to do with the video that you were making, but you were basically trying to type this one sentence <laughs> and you said, and you couldn't type it. And then you were just like, don't worry if you can't type, I can't either. And I'm, I'm still a developer. You know, I, I think of that every time because it made me feel so much better. Because when you put on the spot, I just, I forget how to type. Oh know? God. Uh, like a, a, there's nothing like a stream to make you a bad typist really. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I kind of almost view myself as a professional bad typist. Um, <laughs> so many people appreciate that. I guess like sometimes I do, I went to write a type and trying to improve my uh, typing skills. But whenever I test those, I actually, uh, I actually find that I am, I'm an average typist, statistically speaking. Uh, perhaps it's uh, garbage, more garbage when I'm, I, I stream, but uh, it's, uh, I don't know, it's not that important for a developer. I feel like it's so little of my, I, how would my productivity improve if I was a faster typist? It's so little that it's just churning out code. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on what kind of work you're doing. I definitely feel that when I'm on the stream and I'm typing like 20 words a minute less on average, yeah. I get very frustrated because I usually know what my productivity level is. Ah. And so I think that's the biggest thing for me is my regular typing is actually doesn't hold me back too much, but my stream typing definitely does. And I just want to get a lot done in that two hours and it's just never happening for me. Yeah, I mean... Perhaps there is some point to, there is this saying when you, when I learned YouTube that, uh, yes, like the camera adds, uh, like 20 pounds, it's also removes <laughs> like, uh, 20% of enthusiasm. So you kind of like have Agreed. to be more, uh, more intense in order for, to, for people to read you as, as a normal person sort of. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Sometimes, um, because I do this stream, and I obviously live in a place, but, you know, I'm surrounded by neighbors. I always think they can hear me for two hours talking to myself very animated, you know, in a very animated way. And then I'll watch my streams and I'm like, wow, I just sound like the most bored person on the planet right now. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, day nine is one of my uh, spirit animals when it comes to streaming. He's a StarCraft streamer. And he mm -hmm. gave a really good advice about streaming that you should never push against your current mood. And so if you're, if you, for example, if you're, if you're tired, like just horribly tired or like sad, you should uh, acknowledge that and have like bring mm -hmm. the audience into that. Doesn't necessarily mean that you like have to be super sad on stream, but more like say that oh, I haven't had the worst day uh, and now I'm gonna try to churn that away in the stream but like try to be there and not try to fake anything yes exactly yeah I totally agree with that um and I I would usually say something like I'm sick today or 
Yeah. Um, not feeling it today, but let's see if we can like raise the mood or something like that. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, I that is that is so important. And I feel like Twitch is also specifically a little bit geared towards that because I don't know, mm -hmm. it's just a space where we both both hang out, you know. Oh, this I'm is just like, answering some questions too. Uh, I like this question by Art Dev Game. Do you guys struggle to code and talk at the same time? I try it from time to time and find it div difficult to juggle thinking, talking, and processing questions. Any tips? That's really hard. And that's been why I've had a few frustrating streams recently. I've been trying to work on stuff that is kind of bleeding edge and at the same time keep a lot of context in my head all at once about all these different layers of, of like basically hardware libraries that I'm using. And I'll turn off the stream and immediately see what was wrong. And it'll be a very simple thing. Yeah. So it won't even be, oh, it's some complex thing that I needed to be alone to think about. It was, no, I, I just have zero short-term memory buffer while I'm on the stream because like I'm using that to talk and then verify what I'm saying and then think of the next thing to say, you know. Yeah, I uh, one thing that I've found with streaming and YouTubing in general is that I discover how much cognitive, how much cognit cognition it requires to speak and hold a conversation. It um, it is it is tricky. Like uh, a stream can still make me more productive for sure because I get the help from chat on things and like they see things that I don't see mm -hmm. but uh, but it can it, it requires a lot of practice to be able to talk and uh, and, and interact at the same time um, I, uh, I think it's practice to a certain degree but uh, it just it, sometimes you just have to pause and think I think yeah, absolutely. I don't think I will ever be fantastic at programming while presenting and speaking. I just don't think that, like, I, I've, I've, I have the stats for, like, how bad I am sometimes at orally processing stuff and, like, short-term memory because I knew it was a problem even before streaming. And so, you know, I obviously, went, like, went through a bunch of tests and stuff. And I was just like, wow, this is why I'm so pathetic at programming on my actual stream this makes so much sense now and so to a degree I can try and improve that but I think for even even anyone who like doesn't have those kinds of challenges usually someone will say to me oh I'm going to try streaming and I'm like oh cool and I'm like really excited for them and then they come back and they're like that was the hardest thing I have ever yeah. done I could not concentrate I could not like I forgot all my keyboard shortcuts that I use literally every single day yeah. and I just like started doing things that I would never do normally <laughs> yeah for sure um like the first time I I streamed it was exhilarating and terrifying um, because mm -hmm. I just turned on the stream and I, re I started talking and I'm re I just realized that, oh, I'm not going to shut up for two hours now. Uh, <laughs> it's just like, I just have to keep talking, not stop talking at all. Um, I follow, I'm, David is a big fan of this um, uh, XCOM YouTuber uh, called uh, Christopher Odd. He plays XCOM, that's his thing. And... Um, yeah, XCOM is such a complicated game. Uh, it's basically a little bit like the, similar to programming in that sense. Mm. There's so much thinking going on. Uh, so actually, like normally he streams all his other games, but uh, XCOM specifically, he just can't. He just records that offline in order to be able to, uh, to focus. Yeah. I, that makes me feel so much better. I'm so glad you told me that because I always think, am I just making excuses? Am I actually, am I actually like this sort of, um, am I this unproductive by myself and I'm just not noticing it as much? Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll start sort of questioning myself and then I'm like, no, actually I just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, did this, um, I did a stream where I started out working on a on a project of mine that I hadn't been working for a while. And I was like, wow, I got like one test during these, <laughs> these two hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, 
yeah, I, I totally get it. I remember the first four streams I did, I rehearsed what I was going to do, mostly because I wanted to know if it fit in the time box. And two, I wanted to know what kind of bugs I would run into. And then I would just check out a brand new branch on my stream and then just start all over again. And like, obviously that becomes not sustainable, but it, it's interesting how differently I did things the next day, even though I was extremely familiar with what I was about to do. Um, but, but I almost like anticipated that I would not be that great on the stream because, you know, I, I interview extremely badly as well when put on the spot. So I sort of had a feeling. Yeah. Hmm. I think it's, I think it's nice to uh, share vulnerability in that way. It's mm -hmm. uh, because nobody, like so few people display vulnerability and that makes, makes it seem like everybody's so fucking good all the time. <laughs> and that is just, it's like the Instagram of professionalism. Yeah, I started out sharing vulnerability just to lower people's expectations or just to be, try to sort of make myself feel better about things. Um, but then I realized that it's just important in general because no matter what I think of myself, there might be people out there who actually look up to me as well and put me on a pedestal, even if I don't think that I'm particularly that great. Um, and you should be trying to kind of help with, you know, the fact that people will do that too and compare themselves to you even, so. Yeah, I it's so strongly agree. Uh, and it also comes back to, uh, like I, I did this, I randomly did this video uh, a couple of weeks ago where I guess why I'm going to therapy. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, because I had a, close friend of mine who is uh, trying to convince uh, another close friend of theirs to go to uh, go to therapy and he was so adamantly against it and like just mm. didn't want to go and it has been so beneficial for me so I just figured that since a lot of people I, w I don't want to say that they look up to me but I like they look up to the persona that they have like embodied MPJ in and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that, uh, that means that I feel like I have a certain responsibility to show that I have these human sides that everybody else has as well, because they need to be baked into the persona. Otherwise, people might compare themselves to that persona and get like a f messed up view about reality. Yeah, everyone's multifaceted. Um, and we always naturally try and present our best selves. So being able to short circuit that I think is really important. I mean, I'm literally going to a therapy session after this stream. So that's <laughs> usually why I'm up early in the morning anyway, yeah. because I have to travel. So good for you. <laughs> yeah. It's really nice. I, uh, I like my therapist mm -hmm. a lot. I feel like I struck gold. Um, let me, let me see if we have any other questions. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out our sponsor Linode info in the episode description. If you're new, this was an outtake of a live stream that I record every Monday morning. Uh, you can find it on twitch.tv slash fun fun function. Uh, you can also check out some more videos of what this channel is about here or subscribe at the YouTube channel here. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.